Welcome back all to our uh, AIFC Total Football Podcast. Uh, joined today by uh, some very, very special uh, guests here. Some some guys that are you know close to, to my heart. Um, touching base on the jump towards the NCAA, uh, and it gives us a good you know Canadian, uh, very hyper local perspective as these three boys have been a part of their development in, in Toronto uh, uh, all through. Um, joined here today. Uh, by Ronaldo Mar- Marshall, uh, Sal Mazzaferro, Shafiq Wilson, um, all representing uh, respective universities uh, down in South Florida. These boys are all very close to me as uh, we had the opportunity to uh, to work together for many years, uh, spread, shared some special times, and uh, had the opportunity to win a national championship together, which hey. is something, you know, coaching. Uh, Gang, of course. Uh, we well, very, very, very close. Uh, in my heart. Uh, uh, Shafiq uh, attends Florida Atlantic, uh, Atlantic University uh, out in Florida, of course, uh, graduated recently from the Wood <laughs> program. Uh, Ronaldo attends Florida International University uh, as well, graduated from the Woodbridge Soccer Program here locally. And uh, Sal uh, attends the University of South Florida um, out in uh, Tampa, uh, area uh, graduated most recently from uh, T- Toronto FC. You know, again, I- I've known these boys uh, basically since uh, they were 10, 11 years old. Uh, oh, youths, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Most of it, uh, I always, uh, you know, mention and 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 being involved in, in in the game at at a coaching level, just how difficult, you know, it is to you know maintain an, an elite level, um, you know, through the transitions of, you know, being a 12 year old player to a 15 year old player to you know, getting to that time where performance really matters when you're getting close to, you know, 17, 18, 13 mm-hmm. to, to get to your dreams. And, you know, these guys for, for all they carry have, have been able to really, you know, transcend and, and, and continue to, to shine at, at all levels. So, you know, they carry some, some great uh, backbone and uh, a, a great template uh, towards himself. Uh, Sal uh, is, you know, an elite talent uh, who carries a professional mind, uh, mindset, um, basically from 11 years old, you know, uh, is, is, a, is a guy that comes in and uh, really, you know, puts in a, a shift every, every single time out, whether it's a game, whether it's training. And, you know, he's a player that any, any coach or uh, any, any teammate or respect and, and, and really uh, look to work with uh, on, a, on an everyday basis. Um, you know, Ronaldo, uh, you know, what more can I, I say about Ronaldo? Anytime I talk about him, he's one of the, the top strikers that, uh, I've, I've ever worked with and, and a, a standard that I, I'm going to continue to look for other strikers for, for a long time, you know, besides you know, being a, a dominant um, and, and, you know, amazing you know, uh, quality athlete, uh, carries a lot of, you know, other, other attributes, you know, that, that humbleness, that willing to learn, mm-hmm. you know, that fire, that appetite to be a teammate, which, uh, you know, just, just missing the all around package, uh, you know, besides uh, being a, uh, uh, top 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 player in, in his position and maintaining you know really uh, as an unstoppable force uh, all through uh, mm-hmm. uh, his, his youth career and uh chef uh chef I, I met i think i met maybe a little a year or two after uh uh-huh. these boys uh you know he's a great example of, of somebody that is you know banking uh, upon himself and, and trusting your own process and trusting your own pathway mm-hmm. you know um, always a player that has you know, uh, maybe not chase the accolades that sometimes uh, people get uh, caught chasing, which is, you know, certain uh, teams or certain programs and things of that nature, but always found himself at the top, you know, uh, competing at elite levels of competition, competing under elite teams, and, you know, has really chiseled out himself into uh, a top elite goalkeeper, you know, who has uh, reached all of his goals and, and continues to, you know, evolve in uh, his, his professional pathway. So, guys... Thank you very much for uh, for joining uh, me today. It's always a, a pleasure to to catch up with you guys, and it's almost crazy to to see you guys uh, with beards now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not me, bro. Not me. <laughs> I keep it clean. I'm keeping it clean. Yeah, so bro. Me and you have a little bit to go. <laughs> Honestly, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, today we want to, and in all these, you know, webinars, we've had the opportunity to to speak to some, some giants and some real royalty in, in Canadian football. You know, we've had, uh, you know, guys that have played in the MLS, that have played in Europe and really have traced uh, the pathway. But, you know, it's also, I think, very, very important. Um, and, and I say, um, as, as, as a coach, uh, 
that uh, the NCAA uh, pathway is is definitely a pathway to pro. Um, you know, I've, I've clearly seen many many examples of that, um, and sometimes um, just in, in our community and and, and just the, the pathways that we come out from, um, we're sometimes sold a different avenue all the time. And from yeah. a very young age, you know, you have to go down these paths um, to continue. You know, your 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 pathway to to make it to your dreams and to your goals. And, uh, you know, definitely this is why I was I was very excited uh, to have this conversation with you guys, because it's definitely three kids that I'm looking at that are very well on their on their pathway to pro um, still continuing uh, in that light and uh, really looking forward to your insight. Um, as many of these players know you within the, not not only within our academy, but, you know, the greater general Toronto you know community, you guys have been some of the top players around. Um, for, for, for many, many years. So I'll start, you know, with, uh, with Sal here today. Um, in terms of your, your process into your current university, um, what were the key elements that helped you into that decision to attend a school where, where you were at? Uh, well, obviously, a huge thing for me was the uh, first off, what I looked at was the, the players and the coaching staff. I wanted to make sure that the environment I was going to go into other players were on the same page as me and the coaching staff were on the same page as me as well. So those were two things I looked at right away on every visit that I went to. Um, also the climate, I wanted to go somewhere where I felt had a nice positive vibe and right away it was either Florida or California. And it was a dream of mine to go to either uh, state and Florida. When I saw that option, I was clearly on board with that. And uh, also I wanted to know my role. So I want to know my role within the team and if the coaches really needed a player like me and if I was going to contribute, like I didn't want to go somewhere where I knew that there was going to be three other lefties going in my same position. I wanted to go somewhere where I knew I was going to be a key player right off the bat. So I'd say probably for now, those, that would be my answer. Nice. Right. So, uh, you know, just to touch back quickly on that, and, you know, you definitely were a player that logged in a lot of minutes uh, this season and by all accounts had a successful season for yourself. You know, going in, into that conversation initially with South Florida, you know, was that something that, um, you know, as a coach, I know it's very hard to promise those things, but did you feel a, a sense of assurance in terms of, you know, having the opportunity to, hey, you know what, if I really go do my thing, I can get some time on that? Was that, was that made clear to you? Uh, yes, for sure. I was very honest with every school I spoke to and especially with South Florida. I spoke to the coaches and I told them, I said, listen, there's other schools right now that rankings wise are much ahead of you and they're giving me promising uh, scholarships. And they, uh, they basically told me, no, you're going to be a key contributor to this team. You're going to be getting minutes. You're going to be given a lot of time to prove yourself. So I took that as a, a great positive and, um, that was for sure a key contributor to uh, choose that awesome. school. Yes, yeah, most definitely. That's good. It's good. It's good to get ahead of that clarity. So, yeah. uh, Ron, circling to you, I, I mean, you're, you're definitely a player. I think with you know enough opportunities, uh, you know the uh, doors would open to you anywhere. Um, you know, uh, choosing the school at Florida International University. I mean, definitely a prestigious school. Um, what, what were some of the components that helped you into that decision? Um, like Sal mentioned, obviously, like the location, being in Florida, all of us picked Florida. So that was also a big part. Um, the history of my school and the coaching staff, I think it was the year, you know, two years before I entered the school, we just got undefeated and we made the NCAA tournament. So that was a big part of me. So I looked at the coaching staff and I said, okay, they can build upon that. And I also saw that that same coaching staff had got a lot of players into the professional level through the draft. And that's obviously something that I want to pursue going through my years in, in college. So that was a big step for me. And just the overall success with the school. I know that we do well uh, every year. So that's something I wanted to definitely pursue in going into my college career. Right. I got it. And Shaf, I mean, you, you yourself are, are, are definitely, I would say, uh, thinking back to the bunch here, most the most adult independent outgoing figure things out yourself in in, in terms of your, your your pathway you know how, how would you say you know the the, the build up towards uh, your decision to go to your school happened for you yeah so um as you know speaking to more of the process of getting into uh division one soccer and things like that um as you're aware of so uh we were we were all a part of very high profile teams but speaking more to the woodbridge side uh 
it was a very big thing for us looking into going to showcases where we would gain like these kind of exposures where um you could talk about edp sigma showcase uh disney showcase very big one um so kind of going into things like that where where these schools could kind of come and see us was a very big part of it so um so speaking me personally um fau saw me at uh at the disney showcase and uh they had interest in me so uh i'd uh, i'd gotten back home and they they reached out to me they they relayed their interest and they they offered to um to bring me to their school to show me around and see what's up uh so i i uh like everyone said before me the florida was a big part so knowing that the school was in florida obviously it uh it propelled me to go out there and i kind of went through i went through the exploration of the school and the campus like that um through my meetings with the coach and things like that uh there was very like many different factors that that drew me toward the school so uh yeah so that that's kind of how i came up with my decision yeah for sure and just being I mean, able to be yeah being on the campus and things like that it's a huge draw factor right yeah for sure and as, as a yeah. keeper i know you know that it's, it's a position where you know a, a lot of maybe chess teachers go into that decision as well like how many exactly. how many years is that keeper uh yeah uh, in front of you and a lot of times it's, it's very difficult mm -hmm. for a rookie you know, keeper to come in and things of that nature mm -hmm. was was that you know a, a part of your decision as well just, just to have yeah. clarity on in with that exactly yes yeah. see i should have thought i should have touched on that a bit more so that was a very big part in it also i was going into a school that uh that only had two goalkeepers on the roster um, and two of the goalkeepers are both seniors, which is very, very rare to see at a school, only two goalkeepers and both of them being seniors. So that was like, that was a huge thing. I knew myself, I was going to be coming into a school and um, these two goal, these two guys ahead of me were going to be able to mentor me and just bring me into my sophomore year where I was going to kind of step up to the plate and take uh, take on the role of that, that one guy, you know? So for sure, that's uh, that's something my coach laid out to me from the get go. And I was I was willing to work with it. Yeah, absolutely. That's mm -hmm. that's great. And I, I think all of us guys, um, you know, coming from uh, you know the environments that we come into, uh, I think sometimes it's a a little bit of a of a fight where you have to you know continuously seek you know a, a higher level of competition, you know, travel. Um, you know, if you're not in, in, in tied up into certain leagues, uh, you know, certain pathways have to get sought out and things of that nature. Now, overall, I, I think one of the main things that would stand out to all of us when it comes to, you know, uh, the American market is when it comes to sports, you know, there's a lot more investment involved into, you know, winning and success into, you know, uh, the, the overall presentation of sports, right? Um, you guys are, you know, very hardworking kids. Obviously, making that jump into the NCAA is, is something that, you know, for, for all you can do, you're investigating and things of that nature until you sort of cross that line, you know, certain things are just not, not, not a part of our culture, not things that we see every single day. So, you know, Ron, what was the first thing that caught your attention um, as, as really, you know, uh, different in, in your new football setting um, during the initial period at the school? Um, I think a big jump from, from going to NCAA was adjusting to the schedule like a lot of people are just used to i have practice monday wednesday friday at 9 p.m at this location now like you're in a situation where okay i have to wake up at 6 30 every morning i have to eat breakfast i have to be at the change room at a certain time i change from this time to this time and then i have class from this time to this time and then i gotta rest do my homework wake up and keep going right and it's just being able to follow that routine take care of yourself it, it's it's really different and it's something that you have to adjust to very quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. So what, what stood out for you right at the beginning of this whole process? Honestly, I had no idea what to expect going into the uh, college soccer. And the first thing that caught my attention, I'd say, was the high level of soccer. I mean, there's many internationals that are on my team currently. And mm -hmm. I was not aware of their level of soccer until my first few months there. And I saw them in trainings and in games, how serious they were and how we all have the same mindset. And that really impressed me with uh, the NCAA first division. Yeah, it's awesome. And Shaf, obviously, you know, coming from a club soccer environment, it's a little bit usually more intimate, you know, one or two mm -hmm. keepers for team things sure. of that nature. You know, how, how did that, how did that, you know, feel for you now, you know, sort of splashing in and going into that deep end now where you're, you know, working with a staff of key uh, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, more specialized towards you on a daily basis and now, you know, regardless, it's a competition, right? Now starting to yeah, work with sure. uh, how, how did that, how did that stand out for you? 
Yeah, so so playing on things like that, that that's um, for me that that requires a ton of self initiative. Uh, like you said, coming from those programs where it's like I was usually just like the sole goalkeeper on the roster, and I I had that position to myself. So coming into things like just training, where um, maybe we're getting into a shooting drill, and I have to kind of sit behind the post and wait till they tell me to when to come in. That's a huge that's a huge mental factor. So you kind of <laughs> when I'm walking into practice, I have to just look at it like. Like, I have to look at the payoffs, right? I have to look at, look, I have to grind for this so I can get to this. So kind of that long-term mindset mentality is kind of what brought me through it. Um, so that that was probably the biggest factor, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and the great thing is, you know, for sure, you know, just being of your template, you're, you're built for that. You know, I, I think yeah. in terms of when we looked at your goals and objectives when you were much younger, you know, we, we knew that you were going to get there. It's just, let's just stay steady and take that long road. So it's, it's great sure. to see that you have that mindset. Um, you know, go along and, and just sticking with you here. I mean, at, at the end of the day, we could talk, you know, soccer all day between us. You, you know, you guys are, you know, soccer's in, in your veins. You know, there's definitely, you know, uh, with, without a doubt, you guys are, are, are on the pathway to pro. You know, playing in, in NCAA, though, I, I mean, we've, we've been very oriented in, in this first part of this conversation. It, it, it does really carry, an, a, you know, an academic commitment as well. You know, what weight you put in terms of your school, your schooling pathway, you know, opposed uh, to, to an overall football decision going into the school? Yeah, well, if I if if it was uh, if it was solely up to me, I would have honestly not put any attention into the academics whatsoever. But I had a lot of good I had a lot of good people who uh, you could say strongly encouraged me to uh, kind of take that into account. And coming off of that first year, I've realized that now. Uh, how important it was. So um, going into it, uh, I was, I was, I've always been a person where I really wasn't sure what I would do if I wasn't playing soccer, because that's always been the thing for me. So right. it's kind of like, I hate looking at the plan B type of thing. And when, when you're going on a scholarship to a school, you know that the academics is a plan B. So kind of, kind of entertaining that for me, I, re I wasn't really sure on what to do. So I entered, uh, I entered like a, like a general, like undecided uh, major um, right. where I took like a bunch of courses where I could see what I, what would open my eyes to certain things, but I would strongly recommend um, someone going into a school to kind of like have tunnel vision on their focus on what they want that to be in just so that they could get ahead with their studies. And like, uh, I ended up picking, uh, going into like a business side of things. So I, I would really, I would strongly recommend rather than kind of just letting the flow take you wherever is kind of stepping out and decided what, what you want to do with your academic life. So I, yeah, that's what I would say for that. Yeah, most definitely. And, and, and Ronaldo, I mean, uh, you know, in, in, in your pathway, I think, you know, r right along the line, um, you know, you, you've always been right at the upper echelon of, you know, of, of, of your position, you know, working, Canada soccer, provincial level, things of that nature. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to understand, you know, the mindset that, that a, a guy like Shaft comes from, uh, you know, and, and now dialing yourself in over to, you know, the school side of things and the academic side of things, you know, how, how did that weigh in for you, um, you know, going over to a school like FIE? Yeah, like 100%, like you said, like um, going through my, like my youth career, like in Ontario, I had a lot of football to, to revolve around, right? Mm -hmm. So school for me, like, to be honest, it was a it was a, a second, secondary right? thing. Exactly, I, I, yeah. I had to make it a first, right? Mm -hmm. And like by my senior year, when I started getting all these offers and things like that, when I saw the interest within the schools, I was like, okay, it's time to hit the books. Like it's time for me to get my marks up and things like that, right? And what what I would like to say is like, within within your high school career, it's always it's important to stay on top of your books now. And like Shah said, when when you're when you're looking at that major, if I was able to pick something. Um, in high school, so I could already be ahead on my major. I, mm -hmm. I would have loved to do that, but now that I'm in school, you know, I have a very good support system. Uh, I have a lot of uh, help, even with traveling and things like that. So I'm definitely I'm not behind in school now. I'm doing very very well. I got <laughs> this year, so I'm, I'm I'm proud of that. I'm proud I'm of proud that. Of that so, yeah, but 100% guys that are going through high school right now, focus on your books. Your talent will get you where you need to. So make sure you don't laugh on your books. I'm glad. I'm glad you're saying that. And have you been? Have you gotten a little bit of clarity in terms of your uh, your your future um, in, in, from a, from an academic standpoint? Mm -hmm. So, like um, my last my last spring semester, I decided to go mm -hmm. on recreation and sports management because it, it revolves around my field, right? I want to be around sports if soccer doesn't work. So mm -hmm. I was happy. I was happy to be part of that and just focus on that 
specific goal throughout my high school, or sorry, throughout my high school, throughout, throughout my college um, career. Awesome. That's great to hear. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I leave you last to this question because, I, you know, I, from what I always remember, you know, Sal was a, a top student, you know, someone that was, you know, very lasered in on his, on his books as well. And, you know, it's really a, a, a strong name for when you use the word uh, student athlete. Um, so, you know, from, from your standpoint, is, is that something uh, that, that, that weighed in heavy into your decision? I can also very much understand, you know, a person coming from your background, especially being at Toronto FC Academy, where, you know, understandably so, you're, you're sort of pushed into this keyhole of, of you know, the, the first team for, yeah. for many, many years and, and, and chasing that path. And then, you know, things sort of have to kind of pivot, you know, um, uh, yeah. and, and very quickly towards that, right? So um, how, how, how did academics weigh into uh, your, your decision overall? Uh, yeah, for sure. My entire uh, experience in secondary school, I always knew kind of, I'd say by about grade 10, that uh, the NCAA was looking like uh, where I wanted to go. So kind of from that point on, grade nine, I kind of just started getting used to things in secondary school. And uh, grade 10 is where I really started hitting the books like these guys are saying. And uh, I had really good grades. And in grade 11 is when I first started getting offers. And I saw after every coach I spoke with, how important academics was and uh, how crucial it was to be, to be good, doing good in school in order to get into schools in the U.S. So I, uh, in grade 11 and grade 12, I really uh, stuck to uh, my studies and I'd come home from TFC every night, focus two hours on school and uh, it paid off. I actually got good grades and got a really good score on my SAT and that obviously helped out with uh, choosing school in the U.S. too. Right. And, and is it something in terms of your, 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 your academic, uh, you know, pathway, was that decided already going in um, to, to the school? Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Awesome. And, and uh, do, you, do you think sort of that, uh, that approach that you took, you know, has, has made the transition smoother from the academic side as well uh, in, in your first year? Yes, 100%. I was already used to balancing uh, soccer in school and my academics. So, Honestly, I found it a really easy transition, very smooth. So uh, it really paid off starting back in high school, already getting myself prepared for this. Uh, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. I mean, when we talk about NCAA, um, you know, I, I think, you know, just certain things are tied into it, you know, just a, a quick season, the high level of competition, you know, the travel, you know, the, the, the trying to accomplish things in a, in, a, in a short matter of time. You know, all of you guys being freshmen, and experiencing your, you, you know, your first preseason in, in, in Division One football, which I, I think, you know, culturally, you know, for 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 soccer in, in Ontario, it, it's not really like a big thing to periodize into preseasons or to get. It's like we're going to say, hey, you know, what we're going to really build up over these, you know, three to four weeks in towards this general theme of what we want to do towards the year. Um, so, what were some of the moments that you know stood out uh, for you, and, and maybe were you know difficult to adjust to uh, in terms of uh, your, your first preseason? Yeah, well, uh, first off, I actually headed over to Florida in June, so uh, okay. I missed my prom, I missed my graduation, I missed everything back here. Uh, a lot of sacrifices actually, and yeah. I headed over yeah. to adjust to the climate and everything in uh, Florida. So uh, I think that really helped me uh, because in all of June and all of July, well. Uh, most of my teammates were all still in their home country and uh, doing whatever they were doing in their summer. I was actually like in Florida grinding and preparing myself mm -hmm. for the up and coming season. So when preseason came around, I was first in every fitness uh, aspect. I was first in everything. So I made sure I was really uh, ready to go. And I think it really helped me out by going early to school. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I look forward to seeing you next week. Let's check out where that fitness is at. <laughs> oh, buddy. Shouldn't have said that, so. Shouldn't have said that, bro. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's <laughs> one thing to be fit for everybody else. Yeah. It's another thing to be fit for us. That's for sure, man. It's <laughs> uh, great to hear. And, and Ron, what was, uh, what was uh, some of the things that stood out for you in, in, in your first preseason? I think, I think for all of us, you know, all of us being in Florida, like, the heat is a huge, huge mm -hmm. factor in preseason. Major. Right? Mm -hmm. A lot of us are not used to it. You know, so I was lucky enough to go down early, but me and myself, like I had to go down in August. I still had things to take care of back home. So me and my, it was, it was hard for me to adjust in the beginning. And my coach saw that too. He's like, don't worry, you will adjust. And I did, I did. I got used to it. My fitness increased throughout the season and the preseason helped a lot. But 
for, for all the guys that are going into this college season, prepare, 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 because mm-hmm. for a lot of you, preseason will probably be the hardest thing you'll go through. But if you look at it, if you look at it and just try to run away, it doesn't help you, you know, just stick to it, grind through preseason, get the work in, and it'll just benefit you in the long run. Yeah. Face it head on, man. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. And you're a guy that I think, you know, uh, for, for all your talent has one of the most, you know, positive and humble mindsets, you know, uh, I've, I've ever seen as a, as a footballer. You know, were there, were there moments where that mindset you felt tested in that first preseason? I think going into an environment now where it's like every single person is a baller now. Every single person wants to reach the same goal. It's different now. So it's like, damn, I'm, I'm not maybe a top three player on my team. Maybe I'm like a, a six, seven player on my team now, right? So it's just adjusting, right? And it's like, okay, this is where I am now. This is where I need to get to. And this preseason, preseason and season is going to help me get to where I want to be. Awesome. Awesome. And Shaf, how was your FAU first preseason overall? Yeah. Um, so even touching on what Ron said, like we, we sometimes, most of us, most of us will come from an environment where we're like that, we're like that go-to guy. And even like Ron said, just like adjusting to that, that mindset where you got to be like, you got to accept that maybe like a lower role. But um, speaking more on preseason, um, coming from where we are, we, we usually, it's usually like a four or five, maybe six day a week type, type week uh, on the soccer field and going into a preseason it's strict two two a days two a days every mm-hmm. single day for mm-hmm. that three four or five week period right so definitely that was the hardest thing to adjust to like they said in the in the in the temperature of florida in that climate it's definitely a hard adjustment um but one one thing that i would have to say is um recovery recovery is a very very big thing um coming off of that morning practice and preparing yourself to give you another 100 percent at the uh, at the practice later on through the day even like the eating schedule the eating habits that you have to have is a big thing where you're not like rushing to practice and you have to stuff down a meal half an hour an hour before training it's just a bunch of these little things you might not realize is you it, it hits you in the face right away as soon as you get there yeah for sure and i'm very very glad you touched on that is you know mm-hmm. i think we all come from environments and I'm not talking about you guys in general as you guys are very yeah. self-sufficient to your goals and I talk about that to my players all the time to be self-sufficient towards your goals and mm-hmm. dreams but in in your personal networks here you always have you know mom or dad or your support exactly. network to, okay yeah. you know, let's let's no let's not eat that let's get this or, you know mm-hmm. let's let's take some downtime now and things of that nature and for you to, to pinpoint recovery you know very early um, towards, you know, continuing to be, you know, an elite level and to be able to perform. Uh, I think that's, that's definitely a key, key point, Shaf. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm glad for you sure. that yeah. up. Yeah. It's on, you're on your own out there right away, right yeah. off the bat. Yeah. For sure. And you can just sort of get into a mindset of, you know, I'm just going to try to get through this and it's something very new to me and it's a little bit of a shock, but let me mm-hmm. just do what I need to do to get through this or yeah. for sure. say I'm going to attack this in the top fashion and continue to, you know, find a way to be at that top right and and mm-hmm. recovery is definitely you know very Big very yeah. that huge for huge. sure so you know we we had the opportunity to do uh, uh obviously a, a preseason trip uh that you guys know about to florida um and you know had the opportunity to to really see you know where you guys are at and how you guys are functioning you know for sure you guys are, are playing at some of the top schools in, in in the country and you know i think in my experience um with these schools all these schools they carry such a tremendous team first buy-in. You know, that's, that's uh-huh. one thing that sticks out. You know, all of these mm-hmm. schools, like you have a coach that has like a certain philosophy or a certain thing on the wall or a certain something that everybody needs to pillar around because that's, you know, really the key to success if you're trying to achieve something in such a, you know, short, short period of, of, of time, right? Um, you know, in a lot of our environments, you know, it's, it's natural that it's, it's more of a small pond. We come from a, you know, a great market in Toronto with an amazing talent pool, but it's still a smaller mentality, you know, mm-hmm. where it's, it's much easier to become the man, you know, uh, mm-hmm. around here in, in certain age groups or in certain leagues or in certain regions. You know, what, what piece of advice um, would you give to, you know, younger athletes coming into, you know, Division One NCAA uh, environment shaft in terms of that buy-in? Um, so what I would say is, Honestly, leaving this home, leaving your home with your parents, your siblings, whoever it may be, um, you leave your family and you, you're on your own and uh, your teammates end up making up for that, right? They become your new family. I, as cheesy as it may be, it's true. 
that's what happens. You're in the change room every single day. You're having those fun moments that you remember about school with your teammates. So um, school, so being in that environment of school, it's, it's, it's usually just broken down into three things. It's, it's school, soccer, and social. So the school is kind of on your own. You got to do that by yourself. The soccer, it's like it's with your team. And when I would talk about the social things where maybe you're able to go to like the mall or something like that, yeah, you're going to make friends on campus. But what I'm going to, what I would say is it's very important that you spend as much time as you can with your teammates to do like to develop that bond with each and every one of them, just because to be honest, that relays, that relays out onto the field where you know that that guy has your back, no matter what, that he's your brother for real. Like that's a very, that's a very big thing that you see that, that portrays itself onto the field. So definitely just spending time with your teammates, no matter what you're doing, eating a meal after practice, it's very important. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah. you know, I had, a, I had a conversation with, you know, a player that I consider a VP of the day as well, just in terms of the fact that, you know, you're, you're such an impact player, but you, you hang around the same clique every time. You exactly. Know? And, and it's that, motivation, yeah. It's going to come to, back to bite us in the ass, and more importantly, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass because mm-hmm. at some point you're, you have no choice because you're so good that you're going to need to be a leader. And if you take two or three weeks to spend time with those guys or eat a meal with those guys, they're going to be able to bang for you, you know, when it, when it comes sure. to time. They're not going to eventually cause, be, cause, be uh, uh, a cause of division that you put down, you know, by, by not sure. buying into that team environment, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, uh, Sal, for sure, USF, uh, completely successful season um, as, as well. You know, what, what are some of the, you know, the buy-ins and some of the pieces of advice that you can, you know, you can give to, uh, to some players going into that environment? Yeah, for sure. So uh, going into the NCAA, I think being given the title of a freshman can be intimidating sometimes. And uh, kids could just go in as being a freshman, they could just think, okay, I'm the youngest guy on the team. I have to learn now. I'm not going to be the best there. But honestly, I think you should go in full of confidence and knowing that, yes, you can be one of the best there. So don't just go in thinking, okay, since I'm a freshman, you know what? I have to learn from these guys. Of course you have to learn from these guys, but they could also learn off of you. It's, it's like mm-hmm. a piggyback. Like everyone's going to learn off of each other on the team. So I just think you have to go in there with confidence. Don't think, yeah, okay, since I'm young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. So, and I mean, Ron, uh, you had the opportunity to work with uh, Kevin Nottin this year. Uh, definitely an intense, uh, you know, figurehead and, 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 and you know, a, a person that is, is going to run a tight ship, you know, um, from, from that, you know, buying experience from that sort of all in experience that, that you need uh, to, to be at an NCAA program, what advice would you give, you know, players as well? I think, I think for guys at home right now um, in Canada, just don't, don't be comfortable where you're at. Don't be comfortable where you're at. Just because you're doing so well here, don't be comfortable where you're at. Keep pushing, keep pushing because you are reaching a completely different level where there's mm-hmm. international guys coming in, guys that are coming from professional clubs like Mallorca and Spain and things like that. And you have to compete with them. Don't be comfortable just being the best player in OPDL, for example. Right? You want to be even better than that because the level is just going to keep increasing from NCAA to the professional level. Exactly. And even when you're in school, you don't want to you don't want to get complacent, right? Like you said, mm-hmm. everybody's competing for a spot. As soon as you get complacent, the guy to your left is going to see that and he's going to feed off you, right? So again, just keep pushing. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, you guys have come in in a wave where, you know, it's even it's even more difficult, um, you know, for, for players within the North American market is, is now it's it's no secret, you know, for players that, you know, um, are, are in European academies or academies overseas in general um, that are, are able to say, hey, you know, and I'm able to continue, you know, my school have more more than likely a better quality of life living in the United States as well. And, uh, you know, able to, you know, continue in, in, in making an impact and playing the game I love. So, you know, the, the, on all the teams that we played, you know, it was, it was definitely flooded with foreigners. Um, to say that, you know, any of these teams had local players um, as, as, mm-hmm. as the bulk of their players is, is definitely something that I saw as, as, as non-existent, you know. And, you know, going into that, you know, the level of the MTAA, you know, is, is sometimes debated um, in, in terms of, of players, player development, you know. Uh, you always have your, your your school of thought that, you know, says you have to go the MLS Academy route or, you know, this route or this route in order to continue to, you know, uh, reach reach your goals, right? Um, within your first season run, you know, in, in terms of your overall personal development, now I'm talking, you know, 
for you as an athlete and as a student, do you feel that you've become a better footballer? Do you feel that you've become a better human being from this experience um, in, in, in this first year? 100%. I feel like I've, I've grown a lot physically. Like I feel like I had to put more work in in terms of like the gym, my fitness, my technical ability. Um, I think something that's new to all of us is being a great teammate day in and day out because you're seeing these guys every single day, right? You have to be able to bond with them, like Shaf said, build that chemistry with them because it's different. It's different from your clubs where you are now, right? And I think the last part where I grew a lot was my, my overall brains and my tactical side, right? Because now, like, okay, now we have a specific, you have a specific role for this game and you might have a specific role for this next game. You have to be able to, I have to be at this spot at this time during the game, right? For example, for me, every corner kick, I have to be first post, right? That is my role, right? So a lot of people now have to take on different roles and things like that to develop their brains in the game. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Shaf, what are, what are, uh, what would you say about your overall first year, you know, from a, from a soccer development, from a, from a, from a development standpoint, from a human side as well? Yeah, so um, definitely just being on the field every day in that environment where we are in Florida is, is it's beneficial, right? So it, mostly it comes down to how you approach training and things of that nature because it's a lot of self-motivation that goes into it. And maybe just on my side as being a goalkeeper, like, like I said, behind those two senior goalies that I came into with. So um, we, we, we have, obviously goalkeepers are isolated in training like that. So it's, um, it's good, like getting, getting touches on the ball, participating in these drills, like any, anywhere you are, you're going to get better. But the, uh, the real difference is in that school environment, in that competitive environment, you just, you got to put your head down and work through it. And you got to be the best player you can, because if you don't, then you're not going to see the time on the field per se. You're not going to see things like that where you might, you might have a given here, no matter what you, where you go, you know? So yeah. it's, it's definitely like a, it's a personal mentality that you need to come in with and just be willing to work and put in your all every single day, you know, that that's how it is. Yeah, for sure. And, and I yeah. think a lot of times, you know, guys think as well, or, or girls think as well, listen, I signed on the dotted line. It's, it's four years and I'm riding off to the sunset and it's just going to go. And they don't realize just how cut yeah. it is. You know, exactly. uh, we had the opportunity to uh, compete with, with the school uh, down there. And, uh, you know, we played three quarters of the game. Uh, the coach came up to us uh, early in the second half and said, you know, are these guys really in, in, in grade 10 and 11? And I said, yeah. And he goes, okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to cut some guys on the spot right after the yes, game. Sure. And uh, I, I, I literally walked by as he was telling guys that, you know, these guys are in grade 10 and 11. If you can't compete at this level with these guys, then you you, you don't need to be here. Exactly. Cool. That's how it is. That's how it that goes. Was it. That was it. And I, I literally saw one of those guys transfer to one of your schools right now. <laughs> and it's going to one of your schools. So it really did happen. And, you know, I, I like yeah. it just really stood up to me to just say, wow, you know, I think in, in a lot of these situations, you know, we sort of tap players on the hand and, and sort of, okay, yeah. you know, bad yeah. habits, but we still give it another chance and, you know, to set that level, it's, it's just, it's business. It's just like everything else. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so for you, I think, you know, looking at your overall trajectory this season, you know, uh, by all means, you know, it, it was a success. And I, I, I think, you know, when I get feedback from you, it's, I can't help, but it's a player that's growing in confidence in terms of, you know, his, his pro avenues and, and the fact that, Hey, you know, I could really, do something uh, uh, within, you know, my career when it comes to this, you know, what, what are some of the things that you would say are different within you from the beginning of your first year um, to, to this point now in your development? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, Manny, I, uh, I move all over the pitch with uh, you guys. I was up top with Ronaldo scoring right. goals. And then mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, shortly after I started whipping in balls to Ronaldo from the left side on left back. So mm -hmm. I, I move all over the field and then, uh, just recently at my last year with TFC, I went to center back. So I was just slowly adjusting to that as I was moving to Florida. And I think as a player, I really grew in that position as a center back. I really understood the position well and uh, got to know the position really well. And um, as a player, as a center back, I, I believe I've gone bigger and um, much smarter uh, on the field now. And I really believe I understand the position. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love to ping the ball too. So I'm I'm becoming really familiar with the uh, with the position, and I'm Long loving it now. Balls. I'm really beginning mm -hmm. to love it. 
<laughs> Ronaldo yeah, remembers remember. from when I played him. Yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. I, I think I think from from your standpoint, uh, you know, that's that's one of the main things uh, that uh, you've always had a very you know open mind um, towards you know being flexible and and just just keeping that mind state um, of I just. I'll, I'll play anywhere, you know, as long as I'm, I'm playing at an elite level and I'm competing at an elite level, I'm, I'm going to keep an open minded. You know, I, yeah. I, sometimes players and families struggle with that. You know, uh, no, my, my little Johnny scored 50 goals when he was 10 years old. So, you know, why are, why is he ending up as a left back and things of that nature? But, mm-hmm. you know, the more and more guys that I talk to in these podcasts and guys that have gone, you know, very, you know, very far, um, and, and, you know, some, some guys are some of the greatest players that we've ever had in this country and, you know, in, in, in their pathway and in your age, you just wanted to get on the field. Uh, that, that's a common yeah. theme. Like, you know, yeah. I just, I just want to get on the field and have the opportunity to get better. And, you know, that, that, you know, that positional flexibility uh, for you is, you know, is, is really, I think, you know, benefited you in, in, in the long run and keeping that open sure. mind um, as well. So, um, Stay with you, Sal. What was you know from a competition front? You know, what were some of the things that have stood up for you in this in this first season in the NCAA? Yeah, honestly, I I think I, it was a great group of guys that I uh, really bonded with on my team. I really got to know guys like I on a personal level. I've always been close with my teammates, but going to university, like Shaf was saying before, you're living with these guys. You're not with your family anymore. These guys are your family. So I really did bond with these teammates, and it was ride or die with all of them. And that's, I believe, how we really made it far in the – we made it to the NCAA tournament. We made it far in the league. We we were just a really good group of guys. We all understood each other on the field, off the field, and we were ready to go to battle with them every single game we played. And um, honestly, as I was saying before in the, for the preseason, I had gone there early and really adjusted to the climate really well. And uh, so for playing time, when I was able to prove myself in that preseason, I think it really made it easy for me – for playing time wise and to get a lot of minutes each and every game day in day out. And that's a huge, uh, that's a huge factor as well. So. Would you say the week in week out competition that you guys face there is, 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 you know, consistent? Is it? Yeah. Second to none, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very competitive. Yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. I mean, just obviously with the setup and, and, uh, you know, substitutions and things of that nature, um, it, 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 it's just, a, I think, a league that uh, just takes a whole lot of commitment, you know, like it's, it's just really give everything in, in every moment. And I think that that's something that, you know, players are sometimes, uh, it's, it's hard for them to adjust to, you know, if they're guys that are, you know, waiting for the ball to come and do their thing and things of that nature, you know, you won't be on the field much if, uh, no. if that's your attitude, you know, going into it. And, uh, you know, Ron, uh, for, for you, FIU's had a great season as well. Um, you know, what, what are some of the things that stood out for you from competing against, you know, different schools and, you know, different experiences from, from that standpoint? I think, I think at almost every single team, maybe there'll be like one or two teams, but more or less every team you're going to play is going to be a high level team. Like we were talking about before, every single team is going to have that international coming from Europe, most likely that can ball. And it's not just one, it's probably two, three, right? My team has it, Saf has it, Shaf has it, right? So it's, consistent high level in training, in games, midweeks, weekends, and you're just full of football, high level football. Yeah, for sure. And Shaf, the, I mean, the season is definitely a lot more intense and condensed. Uh, uh, if, if I had to choose uh, two, two words for it, um, you know, how was that experience for you? Uh, you know, just being in this sort of that new environment where it's just you know, two, three months of go, go, go. Um, yeah. How was that for you? Well, intense is actually uh, condense is actually a very, very good word for it. Um, there's within the uh, within the conference and out of conference games, there's not a lot of breathing room. Sometimes you're playing a game on Wednesday, then you have a game on Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. So those those things that um, in between, like I've spoken about, the recovery is a big thing. Um, but those things you need to you need to be weary of. You have a game coming up, so you need to know what's best best thing to do in order to prepare yourself. And things when you look at like a something as small as like a, uh, our team personally, we like uh, sometimes we go in the pool uh, that helps with it. But like video sessions, you need to you need to have your utmost attention like paid to that. You need to like R- Ronaldo touching on things like that. That's a big thing. Knowing where to be on a corner kick, it's it's the difference between a game. 
So just being there mentally, it's it's a big thing because that one goal can be the difference in the season. So mm-hmm. it's big. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Well said. Mm-hmm. And you know, to 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 just close off, uh, you know, today's session. For each and every one of you guys, you know, uh, now you've gotten that first year under your belt. Um, it, it's been a success. Um, your, your reference towards and in reference, I think, is, you know, one of the key things to a footballer. You know, once, you know, the, the initial shock of, of doing it the first couple of times or having that new experience, um, you know, you're, as, as elite athletes, you start to put the pieces together. Okay, how can I find a way, you know, to, towards getting to those ultimate goals? And, you know, when I, when I get feedback from all of you guys, um, from from your coaches and 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 you know from your network alike, I, I, I hear great things um, in terms of your trajectory. So I'd, I'd like to congratulate you guys all uh, on on that. Um, you know, what is something though that that now that you pin yourself back um, going into that first year um, that you can think of personally to you, um, Shaf, I'll start with you. That you know, as a football community and and from your personal level you would say, hey, you know what, this is something I wish I would have maybe done a little bit different going into this experience. Yeah, so any, um, so a tidbit I'd give to any any player looking to go the NCAA route, um, even through things that I've like researched and things like that when I was in high school, uh, time management was very, very, very prevalent. And um, I, I didn't think much of it. I was like, you know, it's not, it's not very different. I'm already going to school. I'm already playing soccer. Like what more is it to that? But um, I think what I didn't under, uh, like what I underestimated maybe is the connection that those two have and how you have to marry them when you go to school. So here, maybe if you're not doing so well in school, that's not going to affect how you're on the field because it's, it's not really a big deal to like your coaches of your club team. But over there, that's, that's the biggest thing. They have expectations of, of like your schoolwork and things like that, that you need to maintain to even see the minutes on the field. Because I, it even happened to a player on, um, on my team. He was one of the best on our team. He started to fall under the, under the requirements and our coach started to bench him until he learned and how to improve in those aspects. So it's a very, very big thing. Even wrapping up the whole academic side of it, it's, 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 it's a big thing, you know? It, it, it affects your soccer life too. So that's probably what I would have, I would have wanted to tell my grade 11 and 12 self is to get ready. Right. It's, it's, it's very difficult. So that's, that's one thing I would say. Most definitely. And, and Sal, for you, um, going back into, uh, this, this first season, just reflecting on, is there anything that you feel that you would have done different? Um, I don't know about done different, but, for sure, I know that the uh, the level of soccer in college is a lot more physical. I, mean, I bet Shafi and Ronaldo can relate to that too. Um, the the teams they really focus on workouts and uh, spending a lot of time in the gym. And uh, if anything, what I would like to have done before my grade eleven, grade twelve self, as uh, Shaf was seen, was maybe just prepare myself physically a little bit more mm-hmm. and uh, hit the gym a little bit more because obviously that would have uh, been a huge benefit and uh, it would have gave you com- much more confidence on the field too, knowing that you know, I could take down these guys that I'm playing against, whatever. Yeah, for sure. And, and even, you know, I know some of uh, you guys all had opportunity to compete in the MLS competition recently as well. And, you know, just, just a commitment to, to your physicality, you know, is just even another level above, above that too, right? So it's yeah. just a good practice to always engage in. I think once you, you get into into the level that you guys are at and, and, and level beyond, you know, just, just putting in personal work and growing as much as you can to, to your physical is, uh, it, it's key. 100%. You know, something, something yeah. that, you know, I just finished having this conversation literally two days ago that, you know, I can't, I can't ever remember my fittest guys ever sitting on my bench. You know, you, you, as, as long as you're fit, you, 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 you you're turn really a lot playing. of, you, yeah, you're, you're going to turn a lot of ways to, to dial you in, right? So, Ron, going back into finishing off with you, um, what are what are some of the things reflecting on that, you know, maybe you you would have wished you would have told yourself going in or, you know, you could spread to uh, to a greater soccer community as well? I think if I was able to talk to myself in the yeah. past, I would say start becoming more independent, start becoming more independent, stop relying on other people, for example, your parents, mm-hmm. stop relying on your coaches, just – I'm going to work out whenever I have practice. Start becoming more independent overall because 
you are moving, you're alone now, you're away from your family. A lot of people aren't used to that. A lot of people aren't comfortable with that. I was, I was, I think the switch for me was fine, but I know a lot of people will struggle with that. And I've heard stories where people have struggled with that and they haven't been able to cope with it. So just being independent, okay, I'm gonna work out this day and I have this to do and I'm gonna take the initiative and do it. Yeah, for sure. That's, uh, you know, that's, that's great insight from all of you guys. And, uh, you know, I appreciate, you know, your, your realness uh, in, in, in these conversations and being candid, you know, with us on, on all the information. I, I know you guys to be no different and I had no, no different expectation, uh, you know, towards it, you know, just catching up with you guys here, you know, I can't help, but, you know, have some great nostalgic memories, you know, uh, in terms of our, our, our times together and growing up and just even in this conversation, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the screen and I'm like, wow, these guys have been on the pitch for some of my biggest moments as, as, as yeah. a coach, you know, staff, uh, national championship, semifinal save, uh, Sal, the free kick that saved my life against uh, Ontario. <laughs> oh, I still remember that. Oh, uh, no. The, 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 the memories, man. And, and Ronaldo, just, uh, I, I remember, I, I'm just never going to see a standard of a guy who, you know, would get upset about missing a... He scored uh, so many goals. <laughs> get upset about oh, missing yeah. a goal. And Ontario just caught penalty for last three, soul, man. You know? Holy. So, <laughs> I, I think that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just... You know, so great to catch up with you guys, and uh, you know, I, I wish you the best uh, going into this, you know, second sophomore season, um, in, in your in your in your journey and your pathway to pro, and uh, you know, continue to evolve and and, and continue to uh, you know bring the excellent form that you guys know what, know how to bring every single day, and uh, looking forward obviously to staying very close to, towards your football evolution, guys. I appreciate it, boss. Thank you so much for having us on, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep doing good things, bro. Yeah, thank you, man. Appreciate it.